C.E. Coben, the education officer for Smithwick, claimed that the 447 immigrant children were a major problem for their schools. Edward Boyle told the House of Commons, I must regretfully tell the House that one school must be regarded now as irretrievably an immigrant school. The important thing to do is to prevent this happening elsewhere. He was referring to Spring Grove School in Huddersfield. He stated that no one school should have more than 30% immigrants and that immigrant families should be forced to send their children to other schools if the nearest one had reached this number. The head teacher for Birmingham Primary School reported to the local education authority that Caribbean born children were of low mentality, dull and backward. A draft advertisement prepared by the Birmingham Local Education Authority read, Birmingham children are white and they're black. Immigrants come, we can't send them back. Really we'd like to, but now that they're here. Millions who multiply year after year. It's our job to teach them to live just like us, nicely and soberly, without any fuss. God knows how we'll do it. We'd all like to cry. Have you the desire to give help and to try? And teach in our schools, we'll see you get paid. May we please employ you to give us your aid. The Chief Education Officer for Birmingham Local Authority wrote in 1968, if we assume that immigration is costing us something between a quarter and a half a million pounds a year, the question arises, at whose expense? Higher rates than we need to otherwise have paid or postponement of betterment in the education service. It became usual in the big cities, particularly for newly arrived immigrant pupils, to be placed initially in reception centres or in withdrawal classes, where the intention was to make them ready for full participation in the life of English school as quickly as possible. John Eggleston has referred to the recipients of this provision as trainee whites. According to Bernard Coyd, how the West Indian child is made educationally subnormal in the British education system, he said, the education system is a powerful way to deny the black child self-empowerment and identity. Rampton report found significant underachievement in West Indian children. It reiterated an earlier report that recommended that statistics in West Indian students and teachers should be collected and analysed. Rampton expanded the recommendation to refer to all pupils to include higher and further education and to include data on attainment. It strongly urged that it should be implemented without delay. He also recommended that it should be preceded by consultation with, amongst others, local authority associations, the teachers' unions and the Society of Education officers. The Swan Report advocated a multicultural education system for all schools. Contrary to 1960s and 1970s education policies where assimilation and integration were the solution for educational problem, the Swan Report urged a new approach in the educational system to respond to the changed and changing nature of British society, i.e. a multiracial and culturally diverse society. The report concluded that the underachievement of ethnic minority students was substantially the result of racial prejudice and discrimination on the part of society at large, especially in the areas of employment and housing, which had an indirect influence on children. Also, underachievement was due, in large measure, to prejudice and discrimination bearing directly on children. The Educational Reform Act set a national curriculum Multicultural educational initiatives had no place within schools that now had to adopt a curriculum based on the concept that everyone was the same. The MacPherson Report on the murder of Stephen Lawrence included four recommendations on education, one of these being that consideration be given to the amendment of the national curriculum aimed at valuing cultural diversity and preventing racism in order to better reflect the needs of a diverse society. Ofsted reported that state schools were fairly minorities and that some schools were institutionally racist. Ofsted report stated there is a worrying ignorance generally about how to raise the attainment of black Caribbean boys. Race Relations Amendment Act required all schools to have race equality policies. This is an important measure that for the first time requires schools and local authorities to be proactive rather than reactive in producing equality policies. The Guardian reported that 2% of UK professors were from ethnic minorities. In response to the question, 
Why do only 17% of Afro-Caribbean boys get five A to C grades? Sandra Oliver stated that pupils felt that teachers did not care about them. A paper released by the then Department for Education and Skills included the warning that if African Caribbean pupils continue to be failed by the system, they will end up in the criminal justice system. Parents in Brixton, South London raised £4 million in sponsorship for an academy, a plan given support by Nelson Mandela. Despite this, neither the local authority nor the government have been willing to buy the land required. There were twice as many black men in British prisons than in university. The Department for Education and Skills Priority Review stated that personalisation could empower black pupils but not whilst teachers' view is conditioned by subconscious prejudices. According to aiming high, raising achievement of ethnic minority pupils, it's clear that, left to chance, African Caribbean pupils will continue to be failed by the system and be vulnerable to involvement in the youth and criminal justice system. 16% of students in United Kingdom universities were from a black and minority ethnic background up from 8.3% in 1996. Department for Education reports stated that negative teacher attitudes and stereotypes undermine the teacher's ability to raise black pupils' attainment. Race in Education, a report conducted by Race for Opportunity, published the following findings. Ethnic minorities were still underrepresented in most universities. Half of the ten universities in 1995 to 96, with the lowest proportion of black and minority ethnic students, appeared again in 2007 to 2008. This indicates how slow progress has been. Black and minority ethnic graduates are failing to find jobs as easy as their white counterparts, despite being highly represented at UK universities. Some 66% of white students who graduated in 2007 to 2008 found work within a year, compared with just 56.3% of black and minority ethnic students. The report also stated almost twice as many white students study education as ethnic minorities, 10.3% and 5.8% respectively. A lack of ethnic minority teachers can have detrimental ramifications and it's imperative that black and minority ethnic teachers are within the education system to provide positive role models for the next generation of children. Findings for Oxford and Cambridge were worse. In both universities, little more than 10% of students were from a BAME background. At Oxford, males in all ethnic categories were slightly better represented than females, except for black or black British Caribbeans, where females are three times greater in number than males. This had changed little since 1995. At Cambridge in 2007-8, only females of black or black British Caribbean and mixed ethnicity were better represented at Cambridge than males of the same ethnicity. The educational strategies of the Black Middle Classes project found that racism is a reality in the lives of black middle class families. Parents recognise it as less overt than when they were children, but nonetheless pervasive in more subtle and coded forms, affecting both them and their child. The Higher Education Statistics Agency reveals that there are 14,000 British professors but only 50 are black. 89.3% of teachers in England maintain schools are white, British, while 1.5% are black Caribbean or black African. There are only 30 black male head teachers in England's 21,600 state schools.